can't tell you how genuinely excited I've been to do this episode. Most episodes I hover over the publish button going, shall I? Shall I do it? Today is different because I feel, and this is rare for me, fully qualified to share my feelings with you and I hope it's of help to you. I'm a willy, which means I work in London, live in Edinburgh, and this means I travel a lot. I divide my time between being a salesperson ostensibly for Spitfire Audio and being a media composer, film, TV, and occasionally the odd game. And can safely say in the last three years, I've written four entire TV series on the go. So that's business lounges, hotel bars, hotel rooms, and a lot of time on planes and trains. And these TV series vary from epic sprawling period dramas to comedies to contemporary pieces. So I've really really been putting my portable rigs through their paces, not to mention all of the seminars that I conduct in front of, say, 300 people with lots of contacts running, sequences, whilst also screen sharing onto big 4K projectors, that kind of stuff. So I've been in environments where if it can go wrong, it will. And as a consequence, I've honed a portable rig that I now think, certainly for 2019, is the best money can buy. Be interested to see what you think. So after the last three years, Years of willying about, I've learned to look for the following in travelling kit. It has to be portable, it has to be usable, it has to be reliable, and it has to be durable, and most importantly, no proprietary cables. I'll come back to that in a minute. So these important points I've learned over the last three years, learned the hard way in many respects. So I certainly wasn't kind of there back in 2017 when I built my first portable rig. Now, none of this would be possible without the modern space gray MacBook Pro, the stuff of dreams. Well, certainly the dreams of a traveling salesman stroke composer. The unit that I was using back in 2017 was this one. It's a 2017 Core i7, 3.1 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of memory. I think this is just an off the shelf kind of top end MacBook Pro back in the day. Now where keyboard's concerned, I really wanted to have my cake and eat it. A portable keyboard with full size keys and at least three octaves. And I had to be able to attach a sustain pedal to it. Because I'm a sustain pedal whore. So I found this beast, the CME XKey 37, which you plug into your computer via commonly found micro USB cable. Now I went for this and not the Air version, which is Bluetooth, because you can attach a sustain pedal to it. However, in order to connect the sustain pedal, you have to attach a proprietary cable. When you travel, you have to accept that you will lose things. Hopefully some things more than others. USB-C cables, I've left a, a, a trail of those around the planet, less so with MacBook Pros, although I did lose one once. It's very disappointing. And whilst mourning the loss of this tech, the most important thing is to be able to get back in the saddle as quickly as possible for them to be replaceable. You need to imagine what happens if I lose one of these and I'm in shit Alabama and I need to get on a 14-hour flight over to Japan and there's nothing worse than getting on a flight with one of those kind of Achilles heel accessories the thing that enables you say a pair of headphones enables you to do your work and suddenly those 14 hours are just killed we live in an age of Amazon next day deliveries that's no good for us if we've got to make a seminar or we've got to make a flight the other drawback is that it's just this little bit bigger than your average carry-on case so it needs its own bag which you can also also buy from CME. As you can see though, this one has some improvised fastening together rings and has not borne the slings and arrows of willing around too well. You'll also see that keyboard itself hasn't fared much better. These top C's seem to be an Achilles heel for the design of this uh, unit, as this is the second one that I've had and exactly the same happened to the first. I don't know how, just got it out of my case and oh, it's time to put a key under the pillow for the key fairy. Next up, my audio interface of choice, the Apogee Duet. I picked this yonks ago because it looked fit for purpose as well as, I don't know, it just looks incredibly sexy. It is intuitive and easy to use. Indeed, I would say Apogee's software is a delight. However, that is where the delights end. First up, it uses a USB mini, not micro, to attach to your computer. This may have been a popular connector when this unit was first released, but has fallen into obscurity with the much more common USB micro and USB-C. This means you're unlikely to find one at your local convenience store on a Sunday morning in that aforementioned town in Alabama. Indeed, it took me an entire day to find one here in Edinburgh, 
just so you know, Argos stocks them and calls them PlayStation cables. Next up, in order to get sound in and out of your interface, you guessed it, another proprietary cable, which transforms this slick, minimal delight into a freshly quartered cadaver. But the problems don't stop there, for me anyway. The headphone interface is a quarter inch jack. Now, I don't know about you, but I have trouble keeping track of these adapters in the studio, but on the road, forget about it. I use two Samsung T3 SSD hard drives, which were two terabytes a pop, amazing back in the day. A couple of problems with these beauties, I couldn't quite fit all of my contact libraries onto one drive, so I'd have to curate what I took on the road with me. Second, and the more serious issue was I had three of these fail on me over the space of about a year. Now, I suspect it wasn't the actual drives, but the USB enclosure fused or something like that. Finally, because the CME keyboard doesn't have any scalable controllers, not even a mod wheel, I had to find me a portable controller and have had a delight with this pallet gear set of controllers. I simply bought the starter kit, which gives you the brain, two buttons, a knob and a fader, and added one fader. This is a great modular system designed for video editors, but perfectly hackable for us musos. It connects via USB micro, looks fancy when you switch it on. However, I have to admit that I find the distance between the two faders a tad uncomfortable and my unit has plagued me with dropouts. I don't know if this is common amongst all pallet gears, but I do so love it, so I've put up with it. So here's my 2017 rig. Computer, headphones, don't forget the adapter, USB-C dongle hub, two drives, a keyboard, a keyboard case, the Apogee, sustain pedal, proprietary cables, grrr, adapters, and all the other gumpf. A total of 18 separate items and three proprietary, or at least difficult to source, cables. That was 2017. What have I learned since then? The 2017 MacBook Pro was fine for music. I, I couldn't break it, but simply couldn't render 4K files. It literally would refuse. So I upped the ante with this, which suggests, I think, a slower processor than the other one, but I think there's more cores in this one and obviously a lot more memory. The Bayer Dynamic headphones were too bulky and didn't pivot into a flat position like these. Bang & Olufsen headphones, which I absolutely love. I don't use them wirelessly and I don't use them with noise cancellation. They block out enough, even on planes, are super comfortable and don't get any shocks when I mix on them. I also have a pair of AirPods charged up. These keep me sane whilst taxiing on aircraft, but also if I leave my headphones at home or in a hotel, they're waiting as backup. They're great sounding and they're kind of like my car stereo mix check headphones of choice. But the real killer and latest addition is the new Native Instruments M32 mini keyboard. It's an absolute beast. Now, I have to say, I absolutely hate their other keyboards because because they have been designed by someone who's either drunk during or skipped the ergonomics module of their degree course. One slider controller goes left to right under the mod wheel, so when you're using the mod wheel, your wrist resets the slider, which is why I don't own one. This new keyboard, however, does away with the mod and pitch wheels and gives you two sliders, which you can allegedly customize with the provided software, but I just couldn't get my head around it, couldn't get it to work, so I simply use a MIDI conversion plugin in Logic across all my tracks, absolutely brilliant and fine. And it's like they've really been listening to us because it doesn't stop there. Round the back is a USB-A connector. These cables come free with everything, so very easy to source, borrow them from the front desk, etc, etc. But moreover, it has its own sustain pedal input, so no need for breakouts. Well done, Native Instruments. I love you because I feel, with this keyboard, that you love us back. And the small keys? Well, I got used to them on my last show, and it was a sacrifice I was prepared to make because... Yes! As for replacing the Apogee, probably no surprise for you. You've seen me use this before. I've switched to the RME Babyface. This baby blows the duet out of the water because it's a truly portable device with everything you need in the box. No breakout cables, and it has all sorts of fancy extras like digital ins. It's easy to use. I mean, it's RME, so it's software as shit, but I don't care because USB-A, yay. But wait, wait, wait for it. Both quarter inch and Walkman size headphone jacks, which not only means you can lose your adapters at will, it also means two of you can monitor on headphones. Apogee, Huet. I did away with the T3 hard drives and simply spent $30 on a USB-C hard drive enclosure for my contacts sample drive, which I simply yank out of my Blackmagic SSD dock. This ensures total fluidity between my rigs. This enclosure feels shit, but it is the most reliable one I have tried out of about half a dozen. 
I also use a portable basic spinning drive for my EXS samples, mainly because of cost. This is all I need and it does the job and I'll take you through the workflow later. But you may be surprised to find out that the true star of the show is this little beauty, that it was actually something that Paul Thompson found for me. It's called the Hyperdrive Duo Hub for USB-C MacBook Pro. I'll try and link it below if it's still available. This thing has been tested under the most kind of brutal of circumstances. So it takes two USB slots, so she is powered, but it gives them right back here along with an SD, a micro SD reader, two standard USB-A slots, and then you beauty an HDMI slot. So I've been running this, as I say, in, in, under stressful conditions. I've had two drives, RME, Babyface. I've had the actually one of the really big native instrument keyboards. Um, I've been firing out HDMI into uh, massive, super high definition projectors and also I've managed to, to run the, the power to the mains and charge my phone without anything falling off. So how many items did this come up to? Computer, cans, dongle, drives, keyboard, interface, airport, sustain pedal, and then all the gumph. Total of 14 items and zero proprietary cables. So my current workflow, which may be slightly idiosyncratic because of my position as a developer, is I back up my contact drive in the Blackmagic dock. I then yank that out of the dock and take that with me. So it's ultimate fluidity. You have to imagine that the libraries, because we're beta testing, are changing all of the time. So it needs to be 100% fluid. Whatever I'm programming on my computer here in the shed has to be immediately transferable to my laptop. My EXS samples, uh, I basically kind of copy them onto this spinning portable uh, USB drive. I think I lost an expensive SSD and uh, didn't bother replacing it because this things like $50 and it, it does does the work and I have the sample instruments folders in both computers actually as a Dropbox proxy so those automatically synchronized because for me I'm, I'm an EXS programmer so these are the things that are most likely to change so again ensuring fluidity. I store all my movies and all of the logic sessions and all of my Pro Tools sessions on the host drive in the computer because these are SSDs these days you don't need to worry about wearing out spinning drives. I also have these synchronized to the cloud via Dropbox. I use the FabFilter Pro software suite at one because they're brilliant love them very intuitive but also because they don't need uh, any dongles or any iLock accounts to run. So you have them on both machines, absolute fluidity, which is really, I guess, the last piece of the jigsaw, fluidity. Traveling creates so much dead time, but also so much valuable downtime that to be down because of, uh, you know, having to kind of uh, relink samples or uh, reassign uh, plugins is just a, a nightmare. So for me, the final objective of a travel rig is fluidity. I'd be really fascinated to hear what your thoughts are on my rig, my selection of stuff, and what you're using. Please put them in the comments down below. Do subscribe if you haven't done. Lots of, well, probably fairly less useful advice coming up very soon. Ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time I put a film up. And yeah, one of those for me doing all of the horrible mistakes so you don't have to. Right, it's my PA. It's going to tell me where I'm flying to next. See you next time. Hi Charlotte. Hello, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad. You're on, you're on film at the moment. I'm just going to stop the camera.